Crook's Peak. And here we have the M5 going along here. A lot more cars than uh, you'd normally get in a lockdown. I was up there earlier. It's a lot more sculptured than it used to be. I've seen the great big slab that used to give it like a hooked nose. It did look more like a peak, but that's it has eroded quite a lot. No, it has eroded quite a lot over the decade, I say. Well, even the last five years. I mean, in the end, they'll have to build it up. It was a natural feature. It was a natural feature, see? Right, well, here we go. Off track again. We're going to go across a field. Now, sometimes it's full of maize and tall, eight, nine foot high. But I don't know if they planted yet. But at the moment, it just looks like it's grassed. Uh, I've been coming this way for quite a long time. It was introduced to me when I was in the Army Cadets as a sergeant instructor. And we um, used to go on lots of walks, hikes, raising money for charity. And this was one of our routes, the West Mendip Way, that we used quite a lot. And we would walk from Weston all the way to Wells. We didn't have to walk back, we got picked up. It's a long hike, it was 22 miles. I was just thinking of that a minute ago, how I'd done that. I mean, you're talking about 30, 30 plus years ago, 30, I don't know exactly, 30 something years ago. Um, I was, um, I'd, I'd been doing marathon running uh, around about that age group so um, I was very fit I didn't smoke or anything when I was uh, doing all that so here we go, we're going to cross this field we're going to the very old village of Loxton no pub, no shop has got a village hall and a church even the church looks different for some reason it looks darker Maybe they've painted it with something. It's just the sun's not on it, I suppose. It was a very good day for me to do this long walk. Because we're probably, when we get to the church, I think we're sort of halfway. I always feel like it's about halfway mark when I get to the church. It's not really very far in miles. What it is, it's um, the terrain. I mean, look at Crook's Peak, how bare it looks in places at the moment. Look at that there. That's either through rain or they've been doing some maintenance. Or people have been up there, because I know, I think there was a rave up there in the summer with the first lockdown.
a nice big nest there. I don't know if that's a magpie or a rook. Could be a rook's nest, it's quite big. Or it could be a crow or a, a raven. In a minute I'll be climbing up above those trees, following the West Mendip Way on a nice long track. I hope it's not too muddy. It's possible. This is um route I've like I said I've done it quite a few times. I've done it every year for at least ten years. One way or another. Occasionally do it the other way round. It's not very often. Most of the time I seem to come from Winscombe Way and then um, over. I don't think I often do it this way and there's nothing to stop me. It's a nice walk. I don't know if the church will be open. This church seems to s still open even when there's... I th I got a feeling I did it last year. I can't remember. It must have been round about the time of the first... or coming up to the first lockdown. Because I did do Crook's Peak last year. I did come to this church last year. Then I constantly after that... I was concentrating on Banwell, Banwell Wood, Banwell Hillfort, Roborough Warren. I was getting out over there a lot. There's lots of walks I've normally done by now, before the season of the cow, over a pretty way, but it would be very, very boggy over there anyway. But of course, I had my camper van for six years which was always handy if I wanted to do the pretty area because I could take spare clothes, shoes it was always a bit boggy over there a cup of tea I've got hot water with me now yeah I stood right on the top of that peak it looks more sculptured now the actual hook bit has come off if you look at my pictures of Crook's Peak, before that hook came off, you would notice a difference. And I've got close-ups. There's a church over there. Bit of a wasteland here. That looks like a kennel, doesn't it? Very old stone, isn't it, that one? Very old stone. I can't come here and not actually just pop in to have a wander around. I always do.
Makes you a bit older. I only usually do it about once a year, this, this walk. Usually on nice days. I have done it on baking hot days as well. Really, really hot days I've done it. I expect it is locked this time. It, it never normally is. It was one of those that stayed open even when the plague was here, I think. Um, the plague would have been here. But I think this, uh, no, it's definitely closed. This is the first time I've known this church closed. First time ever. Yeah. Definitely closed. In all the ten years I've been visiting, I've never known this church closed. It's weird that, isn't it? They've definitely shut it. Right, I'll just sort of... Crook's Peak, that's the church. I've videoed this so many times, folks. So many times. I've got a feeling there's even somebody else, a Grace Hell, which could possibly be connected to Barbara here. A couple of Hell graves. There's one there as well. That's Elizabeth Sace, who died Loxton, 1833, age 85. Her services with those of Grace Hill. Hell completed 100 years in the family of the rector of this parish. And there's Grace Hell there. She died August 31st, 1830, age. Not quite sure, could be 79. Yeah, so. I always remember that. Like I said, I did a lot for Barbara. And she passed away a year ago. She was a good friend, good family tree person who I found. She helped me, she, she provided me a lot of info about the Fletchers. Lots of information. And she was great to talk to. Online, of course. She lives in Canada. Her family, or ca Canadians. Her family, her father... They came over at the beginning of the 20th century, 19-something or other, where there was a lot of opportunities for people to emigrate to Australia, Canada. They took up the gauntlet there. And uh, what's weird, they were from like London, the Fletchers. And a Fletcher boy met a... met a girl and I just want to remember how it works and somehow a hell a hell girl married into Barbara's side of the tree I think no wait a minute hold on it was a hell no she was a hell did she marry a Fletcher I don't know I'll have to go over the tree now but she definitely had a relative from um, Somerset, right? There was always a little bit of a dispute about it because um, there's something about either the wedding or christening or something, the name Betsy Stoll didn't really come up very well. And the thing is, there is a bit of mystery about Betsy Stoll. She was warm in the ground when he married another woman and then they he slightly changed his name from heel to hell or something like that. Something happened and he reversed his other names but he married the girl and they lived in Western Supermare. I've got all the details 
but maybe she did die suddenly, maybe he was having an affair, who knows what happened to her really. I mean, I've always wondered, thought about getting her death certificate actually, which I might still do, although it's nothing to do with me, but it might settle a few things. I did a lot of digging around, there was a lot going on. People often took their mother's husband's name if they were a bastard child. The bloke would take him under his wing and they'd take his name, but not necessarily adopt him. So that's what happened quite a bit and it did confuse everyone. But the um, death certificate should be interesting, but it probably puts it down to pneumonia or something. Unless, of course, she killed herself. Right, over and out. I'm just going to take some photos.